Roller coasters are some of the most popular attractions found at theme parks today. In order to meet their demand, parks and roller coaster manufacturers have found ways to increase their capacity by adding additional trains or ride units that can operate at a time. Today we're going to break down how roller coasters add and remove trains during normal operation. Almost every roller coaster that runs more than one train has a transfer track. Transfer tracks are sections of track that can slide, rotate, or move in a different way from its original position in order to align with a storage track. Before a roller coaster can use the transfer track, the operators must switch the control system to transfer mode. Once the ride is switched into transfer mode, an operator may move the transfer track from the main control panel, or more often from a transfer panel. Transfer panels are located near each ride's transfer track and allow the operator to safely switch the track from its regular position to the transfer position and back in a short amount of time. While each roller coaster transfers differently, most roller coasters use similar types of transfer tracks. The first transfer method involves parking the train directly on the transfer track, then sliding the entire track with the train on it until it aligns with the storage track. This method is mainly used on B&M roller coasters. The only downside to this method is that it sometimes requires operations to stop for a longer time than other methods. The second method involves sliding or rotating the transfer track until a second track aligns with the main track and the storage track. The two tracks connect, which allows for the train to be moved on and off from the storage track. This method can be more efficient during operation as some major roller coasters such as those at Universal or Disney sometimes allow for trains to be transferred on or off the track without stopping normal operation. Some roller coasters take it a step further and use a combination of both of these methods. This works by sliding the storage track over to connect to the main track and then moving the train onto the storage track. After the train is parked, the storage track can be moved back over so the main track can once again be used. This is mostly done on older roller coasters that typically only have two trains. This is because this method takes up a lot more space than other methods, especially when more than two trains are used. In fact, in the past, this was seen as the standard method of adding and removing trains. Aero, a ride manufacturer that's no longer in business but was very popular in the late 1900s, designed most of their rides to be able to operate with the transfer track in either position, allowing trains to be added and removed quickly. Aero was somewhat of a pioneer of transfer tracks. As roller coasters became more popular, the need arose to run roller coasters with three or more trains at a time. To do this with Arrow's traditional transfer track would take up too much space for most parks, so Arrow introduced the winchback track. This is a section of slanted track that a train can only enter or leave by use of a winch. These are located in front of or behind the transfer off side of an Arrow transfer track. On some Arrow rides, the area underneath the ride station is used as a winchback storage area. Modern rides no longer use this design instead relying on feeder wheels and drive tires to move roller coaster trains into and out of storage tracks. This design evolved to be standard on most modern roller coasters. There's even more details that can be discussed about transfer tracks, and each method of transferring has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, b and storage track design allows for the wheels to be free for servicing when a train is placed on the storage track. Additionally, b and designs their storage tracks to be separate from the main ride area, meaning that maintenance can work on unused roller coaster trains while the ride continues to operate. Another interesting note about transfer tracks is that since most aero coasters do not have drive tires or feeder wheels, their brake and transfer tracks are all sloped downward towards the direction of travel. This requires trains to be chained on aero coasters when removing them from the track. This prevents them from rolling forward when being stored. All transfer tracks also use locking pins to secure the track in place when trains are being moved on or off them. On modern rides, this is done with a pneumatic piston, but some older rides require operators or maintenance workers to manually pull and push the pins into place. In any case, most modern roller coasters, with the exception of a few at Disney and Universal Parks, require all trains or ride units to be empty of riders before trains or ride units can be added or removed. This leads to some delay in operation whenever this is performed. If you're interested in learning how rides operate with more than one train at a time safely, check out my video on block sections. Transfer tracks allow for roller coasters to add and remove trains during operation. Without them, it would be significantly more difficult for maintenance teams to maintain multiple trains on a roller coaster at a time. Transferring trains is also pretty entertaining to watch. So next time you're at a theme park, I recommend watching out for roller coasters that may transfer a train on or off the track. It's a cool sight to see.